Hi! I hope everyone's doing super dandy today because for today's video, we are gonna be bringing out the hook and we're gonna be crocheting again. I haven't done a crochet video in a while, so I'm very eager to make something with my hook. Today we're gonna be making a top that is pretty much the exact same as this one. We're pretty much just gonna be making a checkered tank today. Last time when I made this top just on my own in my spare time, I used acrylic yarn. Acrylic yarn is not breathable and I did not think about that after, you know, spending so many hours making it. So now when I make this top today, I'm gonna be using cotton yarn because um, then I won't sweat as much in this one. <laughs> but that is the plan today. We're gonna be making a beginner checkered top today, which I'm so excited about. So we can just jump in and start crocheting and we'll see how long this takes. So to start our crochet journey today, we are gonna be doing a slip knot first. And then after we got that slip knot and you put it onto your crochet hook, we are just gonna be doing a whole bunch of crochet slip stitches I don't know why I added the crochet in there, but we're doing some slip stitches and you're gonna keep doing those stitches until you get the length you want for the length or the tallness of the top. Like this little diagram here. How long you want the top to be just for the tube portion. And then we gotta do some math. We gotta do a little bit of math and use our big brain to figure out how many stitches will work for each square and it still works for the total length of your top. And then you add one at the end. But you know, once you got all that math done, now we're gonna do a double crochet. So what you're gonna do is you yarn over, you pull it back, you tuck it through, you yarn over again, pull it through. So then eventually you have three loops on your hook and then you take it and you pull the thread, yarn, Jenna, yarn, the yarn through. So we have two loops and then you do it one more time like this. And ta-da, there's your double crochet stitch. I'll show you one more time because um, I go a little fast. I'm, well, I don't, to be honest, I don't really go that fast, but it might be a little confusing if this is the first time you're doing a double crochet. So here is me doing it again. If you don't get it, I will have links down below to help you guys learn from someone that's good. But anyways, when you are at your 10th or whatever, your last stitch for the square, you want to bring in the new color and that's how you change it up for each color. And Benson, can you not walk in the background? Thanks. Okay, anyways, that's how you change the color. And then for the yarn, you just want to kind of tuck it in. So I just have it just above the bottom portion and then I just include it in the middle. And then when I'm doing the top portion of the double crochet, I just have it below. You can just see how I'm doing it. Hopefully it looks better on the screen than my talking because I cannot explain crochet stuff. I don't know why I make crochet videos. It's just cause I like crocheting, but I wouldn't say like, I'm a great teacher at it. I don't know why I'm watching my videos, but they do apparently. Okay. And then my last thing before I stop this terrible, um, up close personal with my ugly nails is when you get to the end and you're doing your slip stitches you want to do two instead of one usually you do one for a single crochet but for this one you want to do two because double crochet stitches are taller and then you just continue on with the same one until you get to the next color Ta -da! So now that I have it all started, I'm just going just gonna keep going at it and crochet for a while. I hopefully will be able to finish this by tomorrow. I'm gonna try to do it as quick as possible and just do it for the majority of the day today. It's pretty easy just to do this once you just have it started because you don't have to think about counting. You just follow and change the colors when you know the colors change on the bottom here. So it's a pretty easy pattern. It's pretty simple once you just get the hang of it and get your flow on and um, that's all I had to say. It, it's pretty easy once you just get the hang of it. <laughs> the first set of squares and now I'm finally realizing 
Is it a strawberry shirt or is it a watermelon shirt? It's definitely giving me fruit vibes. <laughs> definitely giving me fruit vibes, this shirt, which I don't know how I didn't even see that before when I was picking out the colors. Like these together. Definitely strawberry vibes or watermelon. I can't tell which one it is, but it's strawberry or watermelon vibes. You guys decide in the comments if you're getting more strawberry vibes or watermelon vibes from this top. Anyways, I'm just gonna continue on, probably put some more shows on, and uh, just try to crochet as much as I can today. Obviously, it's super repetitive, but I find it just so relaxing just to sit there, crochet, not have to like look at your phone, not have to look at anything, can just like listen to a podcast and just kind of like shut off from the world. I feel like it's like amazing. The best form of just like relaxation is just crocheting. It's honestly so relaxing. Except when you're sweating because it's honestly 29 degrees in my place right now. And by the end of this video, I'm gonna be just in a bikini because I'm really sweating in this top right now. Definitely don't make your top with acrylic yarn. Just don't recommend it. I am done my first row of squares here. It ended up being six rows high and 11 stitches across here. And it somewhat looks like a square or, you know, good enough for me. So I'm gonna continue on and now I'm gonna switch the color off. Up, color, color up. I'm gonna switch the color up. So now I'm gonna switch it over to green so it'll be a green square above this pink one. So to change colors, it is pretty much the same as we were changing colors before where you don't end the last stitch and you wanna pull in the new color when you end your last stitch here. And then you wanna do your couple, you know, slip stitches because it's a double crochet. So we gotta do two. And then you can just carry on and continue doing your crocheting. That's pretty much it. That's all I really had to say. We're just gonna continue on with our double crochet except we're doing the opposite colors that we have below. Hi guys. So yesterday I ended up finishing off my crochet probably around eight o'clock last night. I ended up crocheting for majority of the day, probably like eight hours, maybe, maybe not. I ended up taking like a nap in the middle of the day because I was tired because it was really warm. So I don't really know how long I crocheted, but I got a decent amount done. I'm like halfway now or almost halfway i'm like almost halfway so i'm hoping by the end of the day today i will at least have the top portion of the top done and then tomorrow i can just do the straps but if you look closely you can see that um not all the squares are perfect some are um bigger than the others but the only reason why that happened is because at the beginning of my <laughs> stitches I didn't count it right. I, well, I just didn't count it. I just like guesstimated. I was like, eh, that looks pretty even and did it that way. So count your stitches if you want them to be even. But one thing before we start, I do want to mention that I have these little clip things which are great when you're working on a project for multiple days. They're actually stitch markers, but I just like to use it when I'm done for the day. I just like clip them on to the end of the string here and it makes sure that it doesn't untangle and you don't lose all the knots you just made. Or stitches. I think it's stitches. But that's all I have for tips today, so enjoy this time lapse of me working on the top. So, I have a little update for you guys. Ta-da! We're over halfway now, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and I've been working on it since 8 a.m. 
I really wished I was farther along, but I'm not. I might be closer to three quarters than halfway, but you know, I still got a lot more work if I wanna to try to actually finish just the top portion, not the straps, today. So for my tip, when you guys are switching colors, you wanna make sure the trailing yarn, I don't know why I wanted to say thread, yarn is flat. So it's not bunched up underneath the other color, especially when you're using like a contrasting color here, you don't want the green popping out underneath. So you just wanna give it a little soft tug, but not too much, otherwise it might bunch up, but you just wanna pull all that excess yarn popping out so it looks like this. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because I honestly can't think right now because it's 30 degrees, oh my goodness. It's 30 degrees in my place right now. That's the hottest it's ever been. Okay, I gotta go turn my AC on, otherwise, um, I, I could die. Hi. <coughs> Sorry, there's something in my throat there. So it's day three now and I'm officially done the tube portion of the top. Finished it late last night and this is what it looks like now. We just have this long rectangle piece that we have to put into a tube now. But before we do that, I do want to mention when you are getting close to being done your long rectangle, you want to make sure the checker is in the back so the start and the end offset so it looks like this when you attach them together. You might have to make it a little bit bigger so they offset or if you just don't care then you know just join them however you like. But now I'm going to show you guys how you can turn your long rectangle and connect it into a tube top. So the first thing you want to do is you want to line the beginning and the end together and you want to overlap them like I have them like this. Next, I have a slip knot here and we're going to be doing a single crochet stitch to connect the beginning and the end together. The only difference between doing this and a single crochet stitch is that you're actually going through both of the layers. So you're going through two sets of crochet instead of just one when you're doing a single crochet. And I'm just continuing that for the whole back and this is how I connect them together. And then this is what it should look like as you continue on. And then once you're done, I just go to the end. I cut my string before I finish the last knot. I pull it through and then I just tie it tight in the knot. So this is what it should look like when you're completely done. And this is going to be the inside of the shirt. So when you fold it outright, this is what it should look like. Next, we're moving on to the straps. And the straps are the same thing as the rest of the top where we're just doing a slip stitch to start off. And then I'm doing about five slip stitches here. And then I'm just doing a double crochet stitch for the straps, but you can make them as skinny or as wide as you want. I just made them like kind of thin, kind of thick, kind of in between. So just do about five or six if you're wanting about the same width for yours. But if you want them really chunky, you know, just go all out and do like 10 stitches. So my first strap is all done now. And this is about 30 centimeters in length. And the way I got the length of the strap that was gonna work for me, once I started, you know, getting a decent amount of the strap done, I just plopped it over my shoulder like this. I figured out where I want my top to start, so about here. And then I pulled it tight until the middle of my shoulder, marked that off with my finger, and then I measured this out and then I timesed it by two to get the full length of the strap. But if that seems like too much work for you guys, you, you could also just like wing it. Like, you know, just estimate what kind of strap you want. Now that that one's done, I am starting to work on the second one here because I definitely want two straps. You might want one strap, but I definitely want two straps. I got my two straps here now, so now we can attach them to our tube top here. And we're gonna attach them the same way we did the back here, so where we attached the beginning and the end of our big rectangle. And if you forgot how to do that, I'm, I'm just gonna show you again. 
So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that the middle back is in the middle back. So, you know, everything's lined up perfectly. Next, I'm just taking these pins here. You can just use any type of marker. You can use yarn, but I'm just pinning off where I want the straps to begin and end. And I did this for the front and back. You could also be super fancy and get out your ruler and measure them to make sure they're even on both sides. Really up to you. So first thing, you wanna have your shirt inside out so you know everything looks nice on the straps. And then I'm just putting the right sides together so the strap on the inside of the shirt so it's facing the good side of the shirt. And then I'm just doing a single crochet stitch to attach the shirt to the straps. The same thing we did to connect the tube top portion together. Then after you've done that, this is what it should look like on the inside of your shirt. Once you're done connecting all of the straps, you're gonna have a lot of yarn just dangling around. So I'm just using this yarn needle here and I'm just tucking all of the yarn pieces into the shirt. So I just threaded it and then I'm just tucking it through the shirt and kind of weaving it through until I get, you know, about an inch in, maybe two, depending on what you want. And then I am just trimming it. And then this is what the top should look like once you have all the pieces all inside the shirt now. Okay. I'm done now, so I'll, I'll just show you over here. Here it is. Here is the top that I crocheted over the last two and a half days. Definitely was hoping it was gonna take one day, but two and a half days later, I'm, I'm finally done. Here's a little 360 of it. I'm really, really happy with it. First, because it is more breathable. I did a looser stitch, so it's not as hot. And also I did a cotton yarn, so it feels so much better. I'm so happy with it. I love the colors, how it turned out. Definitely watermelon vibes. You know how I mentioned watermelon or strawberry? Definitely watermelon by the end. So wasn't expecting to have a watermelon shirt, but this is how it turned out. I love it. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this watermelon crochet checkered top today. If you guys are gonna make one, make sure you take me to Instagram at Jetta Fifth because I wanna see the tops you make. Maybe some of you will make strawberry ones, maybe you'll make a watermelon one, or maybe you'll just make a black and white race car one. Who knows? But if you do make one, take me to Instagram because I really wanna see it. <laughs> but that's it, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eat lunch because it's actually pretty early in the day and I got lots of the day left. So I'm gonna go. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.